Hello and welcome to another episode of FTC on Bot Java Shorts. My name is Hunter Cooperman, and I'm one of the programmers on the Penguineers. And today we're going to be covering how to create your own custom class to make objects for your robot in FTC. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and create our own class. And so for the purpose of these tutorials, let's just go ahead and create a class to represent a drivetrain, just because it's something that we've already worked with in some of the other tutorials. And so to create a new class, you're going to right click on the folder that you want to create the class in, and you just go to new and then file. And from here, you can name the file. Be careful because the name that you give the file is also going to be the name of the class. So I just picked something easy like capital D drivetrain. The other thing you need to be careful of is that this not an op mode button is checked because when you're creating a class, it's going to be different than creating an autonomous or teleop program. So from here, you can hit OK and it will create that new class for you. So let's go ahead and resize the window. And if you just look at the class, you can see it's pretty empty. All we have is this package, which basically is you know where the class is and then this declaration. So let's just get started by initializing all of our motors. So let's just go ahead and create all the motor objects here. And so this class is going to be to represent on the drivetrain of that robot over there, which actually has four motors. So you're going to go ahead and do public DC motor, and then we'll do front left. And from here, we can just copy paste and do it for all of the other four motors. And so um, it's important that you are initializing or at least creating all of your objects and variables outside of any method. So like right here at the start of the class, you can see how we do that at the top. Because if you were to initialize any variable or object inside of a method, then you can only use it within that method. And so that would be kind of painful if you created your motor objects inside of your init method, and then you couldn't use them inside of any of your other methods. And so generally it's best practice to put them just right here under the method declaration, at least create your variables there, and that way you can use and manipulate them within all of the rest of your methods. Let's do the same thing here, back right. And then obviously, just like I was talking about, we do need to have an initialization method. So let's create an init method and give it a nice comment like initialize all of the hardware. And so from here, um, something that's kind of weird about initializing hardware inside of a class is that you need to import the hardware map from the um, op mode that you're running it in. And so basically each op mode creates its own hardware map and that's what you use to get all the hardware for your robot. And so um, I won't explain kind of why that happens. It's a little wonky, but suffice it to say that essentially um, you basically need to import the hardware map as a parameter anytime that you are initializing hardware inside of a method. And so I've just done it like here and I've called it HW map. And from here we can just initialize all of our variables like we did in any of the other classes. So just like we did in our hardware map class, we can initialize all of our DC motor objects. So let's say front left equals hardware map dot get. And then we can say DC motor dot class. And then all the names for our motors inside of the configuration actually happen to be the same as the names that I've given them here. So that's pretty convenient. And again, we can just copy paste for all four. So back left, back right, and we can do the same for these. Alrighty. And the last thing we need to do in our initialization program is just set the power of all the motors to zero. Let's go ahead and do that. And we want to do that here, obviously just because this is gonna be the first thing that runs when we initialize um, our autonomous or our teleop, or at least that's how we're going to write the code. And so we want this to be the first thing that it does to make sure that you know we don't accidentally give any commands that we don't want the robot to be doing. So again, same deal, just copy paste these and do it for all four. Alrighty. And so now we have our initialization method and all of our objects created. And from here, we could just create any other methods that we wanted our drivetrain to do. So we already wrote two methods in our methods tutorials, so we can just copy paste those. We can take this one right here, our method which returns a string to get a color, and we can just put it down here. And then oops, we can do the same thing with the other method up here that we used to move straight. Make sure I get that last bracket. And I can also paste it down here as well. 
I like to keep two lines of white space in between each of my methods, that way it's really easy to read. And we could give them comments here, but I'm not going to, just to keep this tutorial short. And so, um, this get color method will work just fine, but we are going to run into a problem with this move straight method. And the problem is going to be with this part right here, this sleep. So um, right here, it's fine to do sleep, you know, when you're just running it inside of an autonomous program. But once you move the method out into another class, then you're going to need to change it to be thread.sleep. And um, so basically what this is going to do is it's going to get the current thread or the current program that's running and it's going to tell it to sleep. And this is going to throw an exception. So it's going to throw an interrupted exception. So we can just put that right here at the top of our method declaration. Um, you can look this up. You can look up thread.sleep and interrupted exceptions on the Java documentation. I won't explain it now, but just suffice it to say that when we're using thread.sleep, you need to throw an exception. And so from here, we can go ahead and build the code. And as long as I didn't make any typos, we should be good to go. Yep, and as you can see, the build was successful. And so now let's go ahead and actually use our object. So I'm gonna go ahead to the basic auto. Um, I've cleared it out pretty much, so just have the wait for start and the run op mode method. And the first thing we're going to do is create a drivetrain object. Let's go ahead and write a comment for that. And we're just gonna do it like we did earlier with drivetrain dt equals new drivetrain, just like was in the sample hardware map that we looked through. And obviously the first thing that we're going to want to do is obviously run the init method that we can initialize all of our code. And remember we need to pass through the hardware map. So the hardware map for any like program, any autonomous or teleop program, you can just pass it through by writing hardware map, lowercase h capital M. So we passed it through and we can just write another comment like initialize all of our motors. And then we can just run both of the methods that we have. So let's run the first method, which would be to move straight. So we can do dt dot move straight. And we can say maybe 50% power for one second. And then we can also do the color method. And remember we have to do that with the telemetry to print it. So we can do telemetry dot add data. And we can use our method here. And then we can update it. And then from here, just to make sure that we can see this color method um, result, let's go ahead and sleep for a good bit of time, maybe like 10 seconds again. Then again, we can go ahead and build our code. And as long as everything is good, which it is, we can go ahead and head over the robot to see what it looks like. And so here I am with the robot. And when I run the program, what should happen is that all of the motors should move in their forwards direction. And then we should see a message on the telemetry from the color. So we can go ahead and play the program. Great, all the motors moved. And then we got a message that the color is red. Wonderful. So that shows that obviously our class was working and we created a valid object that was referencing all of the hardware and each of the methods worked. Great, so that means that our drivetrain class and object worked wonderfully. So good job, you're well on your way to using classes and objects to make your code much better. And like I mentioned earlier, Java is actually an object-oriented programming language. So as you continue to write code, you'll realize that objects and classes are pretty much everywhere in Java. And they're really useful and they're pretty fundamental to Java itself. Thank you guys for watching and please remember to subscribe. Tune in next time when we cover using mechanome wheels and FTC.